Greetings and welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And a special welcome to those who are visiting with us or joining us for the first time. It's great to have you with us, and we hope your time with us today is a blessing on your day. Monday, June 21st, is National Indigenous Day here in Canada, and undoubtedly we will mark that day this year with more poignancy and power uh, than we have in recent years. And so our worship today is brought to us by our BC Synod's Journey Towards Reconciliation facilitation team. And it has its focus on the theme of National Indigenous Day. And so thank you to all who put this service together for us, and especially to Carolyn Clausen, who led the service, leads the service, and uh, herself is an Indigenous woman, a member of First Lutheran Church in Vancouver, and a student at Vancouver School of Theology. What I find particularly meaningful about this service is the way that it brings in elements of Indigenous spirituality, culture, tradition, but still keeps a focus on a strong focus on Jesus Christ as the center of our worship. And maybe in that sense, it can give us kind of a glimpse of reconciliation, what reconciliation can look like when Christians who are rooted in a Western and European expression of the faith open themselves to other expressions of the faith, especially those of our Indigenous neighbors. Perhaps parts of this service will feel strange to you, maybe even unsettling, but I encourage you not to rush to judgment, but rather to reflect on those moments and ponder what might be the gift, what might be the insight that those moments are bringing to you. Above all, I hope that you enjoy the service today. So just a couple of quick announcements for the sake of the Good Shepherd community. One, you might want to check out the second announcement in our bulletin this week uh, about the uh, Spring Street Community Kitchen online cooking demonstration. If you were at our last ecumenical faith break, you heard about the Spring Street Community Kitchen, a wonderful ecumenical initiative down in Port Moody. This is a fundraiser for the Hope for Freedom Society, and the cooking demonstration will be led by Fred Sufi, owner of Pasta Polo, a very popular restaurant in Port Moody. Uh, so it promises to be an entertaining and delicious evening. And then, of course, uh, just uh, remember that uh, this coming Thursday, the Mutual Ministry team is meeting. If you have anything to bring to their attention, just encourage you to uh, do so by uh, directing your comments to any member of our Mutual Ministry team who are uh, Flora Pregler, Jean Blishen, or Elaine Sinton. And so, as we worship today, we acknowledge here a Good Shepherd that we live and worship on the unceded traditional territory of the Coquitlam First Nation, which lies within the shared territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Katsi, Musqueam, Squamish, and Stolo nations. We are grateful for the people who have cared for this land since time immemorial, as we seek to journey towards a meaningful reconciliation with them.
The Spirit of Creator be with you all. And also with you. Come, let us worship the Creator with hearts open to all peoples, where pride and prejudice once dwelt. Let us worship the Creator with minds open to the wisdom of indigenous people. Let us honor the one who freely gives by showing honor for those who were once and still repay oppressed. Let us worship the God of diversity, who made this world in color, in seasons, and endless variety, who created the diversity of the earth's people in Creator's image. We were created to honor one another, and in so doing, we honor the Creator. Let us honor the Creator today by reflecting in our worship and in life the Creator's image, love, all my relations. The smudging ceremony is like a prayer of confession. As we purify our minds and hearts, reach out for the smoke and draw it into your heart. Creator, we offer the burning of sweetgrass, tobacco, sage, and cedar as a prayer of purification and as a reminder for those gathered here to cleanse our thoughts and, and hearts, that we may hear and be guided by your word and direction. We thank you for all our relations, for the four-legged, the weak, the star people of the heavens, and all living things you have blessed us with to sustain this life. Empower each of us through the bringer of peace, your Son, Jesus, to see and change for better the common life of all people in creation. Accept our thanks for all the blessings you have given us and for the opportunities to use these blessings for your honor and your glory in service in others. Miigwech. Come, Great Spirit, as we gather in your name. We face east. 
Here are the gifts from each of the peoples in the four directions of the world. The winds of the different directions remind us of these gifts. Let us turn now to the east. To your single color, yellow, for the morning star. To your animal sign, the eagle, which can soar ever upward in praise of God and calls us to do the same. To your lessons calling us to balance of mind in the spirit of humility. To invoke your spirit of illumination and far-sighted vision. Help us love you and one another with our whole heart our whole mind, and our whole soul, we pray. The East represents the Asian Pacific Islander peoples of the world. This direction symbolizes new life on the earth and reminds us of our connection to creation. The sun rises in the East. Each day is a gift. Life itself is a gift. Help us to be mindful of the new life offered in your Son, we pray. Holy God, God of many names, we honour you through the grandfathers and grandmothers of the East, the spirits of all people of the East who have gone before us, the spirits of those who are yet to come. We pray for all people who now live to the east of us. We thank you for the color yellow, the sacred color of the east, the color of the rising sun. When the sun rises, we offer our prayers to you, thanking you for the new day, for new opportunities, for new beginnings of hope. Each new day reminds us of your faithfulness to us, your people. We thank you for the medicine of the East, tobacco. When we offer the tobacco, we thank you for our children, those who carry the future of our people in their lives. Tobacco, like children, need protection, nurture, and cultivation in order to grow. Help us, Creator God, to care properly for the lives of the children which you have entrusted to us, to honour and respect them, to protect them, and to learn from them. We thank you for Jesus, your Son, whom we honour at the beginning of each new day. We thank you that he lived among us as a baby, as a child, a youth, and a young man. Awaken in us new dreams and hope. Come, come great, great Spirit, come. come. Come, Great Spirit, come. We turn to face south, to your symbol color red, the hue of revelation, to your animal symbol, the buffalo, strong and nurturing, to your lessons calling us to the balance of our spirit in harmony with brothers and sisters, to invoke your wisdom and grace and the goodness of the ages. We pray, come, Great Spirit, come. We turn to face south. South represents warmth and growth. This direction represents women, the doorway to life. The color of the south is red, representing the Aboriginal peoples of the world. May we be encouraged to walk through the doorway to life and light. Give us your strength and courage to endure, we pray. Holy God, creator of all, 
We honor you through the grandfathers and grandmothers of the South, the spirits of all those to the South of us who have gone before us, the spirits of those who are yet to come. We pray for all the people who now live to the South of us. We thank you for the color red, the sacred color of the South, the color of warmth and love. We thank you for all the emotions you have placed in our hearts, emotions which you share with us and ask us to share with each other. We thank you for the medicine of the South, cedar. When we offer the cedar, we thank you for all who nurture the young among us. We remember these people when we see the green boughs of the cedar throughout the seasons of the year. We thank you for Jesus, your son, for Mary, his mother, and for Anna, his grandmother. We thank you that he befriended and ministered lovingly to women during his life, and that he first appeared to women at his resurrection. Come, great spirit, come. Come, great spirit, come. We turn to face the West. Do your turn, symbol color black, still and quiet. To your animal symbol the bear. To your symbol the thunder mighty and purposeful. To your resonance calling us to balance our emotions in the spirit of gentleness and honesty. To invoke your spirit of introspection, seeing within. Give us the strength and the courage to endure the pray. West, symbolized by the color black, represents the gift of rest, the passing of time, and of those who have gone before. The black skinned people of the earth are symbolized in this direction. Give us the wisdom and grace to use your gifts of time and leisure while we pray. Holy God, God of darkness and of light, we honor you through the grandfathers and grandmothers of the West, the spirits of those of to the West of us who have gone before us, the spirits of those yet to come. We pray for the people who now live in the West of us. We thank you for the color of black, the secret, sacred color of the West, the color of wisdom and knowledge. As the sun sets in the West and the darkness of night comes upon us, we thank you for all we have learned during the day, all the insight we have received from you, so that we might share it with others when daylight returns. We thank you for the medicine of the West Sage. When we offer the Sage, we thank you for our elders who carry within them the experience gained of our elders through life. Help us, great Creator to respect our elders, to seek out their knowledge, and to make us use of it for the good of our people. Help us to care for our old people and to include them in the lives of their families and communities. We thank you for Jesus, your son, who as a young man carried with himself the wisdom and knowledge given by you, God, for all times and ages. We also thank you, Jesus, who will meet us at the darkness, at the end of our earthly life, and lead us to the brightness of the eternal life. Come, oh, great spirit, spirit come. come. Come, great spirit, come. We turn to face north.
to your simple color, white of clarity and brightness, to your animal symbol, the queen cell, which brings us in touch with earthness and growing things, to your lessons calling us to balance of our body in the spirit of a good sense of humor, to invoke your spirit of innocence, trust, and love. Help us to open our eyes to the sacredness of every living thing we pray. Nor is symbolized by the color white and represents coolness and the white skin of the world. A gift of this direction is clarity of vision and a sense of the strength we need to live each day. Help us to see more clearly your role for us, especially in the stewardship and healing of Mother Earth, we pray. Prayers for the North Holy God, Mysterious One. We honor you through the grandfathers and grandmothers of the North, the spirits of all people to the North who have gone before us, the spirits of those who are yet to come. We pray for all people who now live to the north of us. We thank you for the color white, the sacred color of the north, the color of the blanket of snow which covers Mother Earth while she sleeps. We are reminded of the purity of this white snow, the purity you expect in the lives of your people, the purity which comes when you forgive our mistakes. We thank you for the medicine of the North, sweet grass. As we offer the sweet grass, we thank you for our spiritual elders who teach us of your forgiveness. We thank you that as we burn the sweet grass, we are purified from uncleanness and are then able to find your presence in our lives. Help us, Creator God, to respect our spiritual leaders and to assist them in their journey among us. Help those of us who are spiritual leaders to be conscious of the responsibility given to us by you and by our people. Help all your people to turn to you for forgiveness and purity of life. We thank you for Jesus, your Son, by whose blood we are washed clean of our sins and made as white as the snow. Teach us to use with the care of your gifts. Come, great spirit, come. We turn to complete the circle and to look to God who cleanses our earth with snow, wind, and rain. To Jesus Christ who fills us with the wideness of mercy and lovingly embraces us all. And to the great spirit who inspires us. Come, great, great spirit, spirit, come. Creator, you bent the earth like a bow until it was one round thinning planet, shining planet. As your word, the, the land was drawn into mountains and deserts and forests and plains. The waters were gathered together into rivers, lakes and sands and seas. Many times the circle of your creation by their greed and violence and the circle of the earth was broken and turned the hearts of the people to one another. They, the all the earth may love and be drawn toward you through the power of your Son, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit in the circle of the Trinity forevermore, all my relations. Creator, Creator to, to you we give thanks, 
in all your brain and ask for your guidance as prepared to open our hearts and minds. Within the sacred circle, Jesus Christ is our center. In all we do, help us to speak with honor and respect to all people and be open to the teachings we are given. As we walk this sacred journey together with our relations, open our eyes to understanding and the strength to truly see the way to live with compassion, love, and grace. For with your spirit can we fave win together all my relations. The reading is from the book of Isaiah 40. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? 
Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Gospel of Matthew in the 26th chapter. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me this one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I thought today would be kind of fun to sit and have a story tell instead of a sermon. or It kind of will be like a sermon, but it'll be my, my story. And, and with the recent findings of the indigenous children on Kamloops, really brought things into perspective for my life and for the lives of indigenous people of Canada. And it really upset me because the indigenous people weren't surprised at all. Because they've been talking about for years the children went missing. It's not like, you know, they got on the plane and went to Hawaii and they're having a great life. No, you know, these were young children. You know, young as three years old. You know, this is like my niece and nephew who are like 16 and 13. They couldn't fend for themselves. So I was thinking about that. And then I, was, I had this vision. And I could just feel Creator talking to me, saying, The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I kept going over and over and over in my brain. And I woke up and I was like, oh, I've got to write that down. Because if I don't write things down, I forget. <laughs> Unless it's the old, really like outstanding and God's like, no, you're going to remember forever. I'm like, okay. So I kept thinking about that. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I look at our world today, and our flesh is weak. Because everyone's thinking about themselves. They're thinking about, oh, what's the best clothes to buy or the car I drive or the house I want, how much money I make. And then we have the other side where people are trying to save the world and save the pipelines and save the earth. And they're so different. And then you see the violence that's going on in our world. 
because our flesh is weak. And we give in to that. And I always think about, it's really hard sometimes to be a Christian when, when things make you so angry. And, you know, that was sort of my week last week, was I was so angry. And then everyone's asking, well, how do you feel? And I'm like, well, what kind of question is that? How do you think I feel? We just found out 250 children that were either murdered were found, their bodies were found in a mass grave. That's not normal, I'm sorry. But Canada forgets what, you know, everyone thinks, oh, we live in such a nice world, and oh, it's so pretty, and oh, there's no racism, there's no one into this. But it made me very angry. Because that's not true. From our first prime minister, wanted to get rid of the Indian. He said that. Get, get rid of the Indian. What is the best way to do that? Well, first they thought, okay, well, put them in different areas. We'll give them reserve lands. And we'll take all the best resources and give them not the good stuff. Maybe they'll die out that way. Didn't work. Because they still learned how to farm. They still learned how to use the earth, what they were given. Because that's what Creator gave us. We lived off the land. We knew how to live through the harsh winters or live through the hot summers. But we knew exactly what to grow, what was we could use, what we couldn't use. But one thing, we used everything. When we went on a buffalo hunt, we used every part of that animal. We thank Creator for it, for its sacrifice that it gave to us. It gave us enough meat to feed the village. And then we'd be able to dry it so we have food later on. It gave us enough fur so we can make clothing so we'd survive through the winters. And we can make moccasins. Or we can make tools out of their bones. So every part of that animal that we killed, we used. Not like today, where they just like, oh, okay. Just like when they found the bear paws cut off and just thrown away. I was horrified. I'm like, poor bear. But if we were to use an animal, we'd use every part of that animal as a sacrifice for us. And same with the spices and the herbs and the different plants Creator gave us. It's something that we use. We use in our ceremonies. We use every day. Because we always have to give thanks to Mother Earth for what she gave us. And we keep forgetting that. You know, we live in a capitalist society where more and more and more we have to have everything. But one thing I understood, though, when we got the pandemic, it changed a lot of things. Because people couldn't go out. And if they didn't have TV, man, you had a lot of other things to do. A lot of reading. And I'm certain there's going to be a baby boom. But also it brings you closer to God. Because... You don't have all that other stuff out there. But our flesh is weak. Our spirit wants to do things. and I get excited because I'm like, oh, I want to do this. Or I'll, listen, I'll be listening to music. And I'll be like praising God in my bedroom. And my cat's looking at me like, what are you doing, mama? But I'm praising God because you can't have church anywhere. Because God is everywhere. Creator is everywhere. But we've lost that. But the indigenous people always have had that. And we have the sacred fire. You know, and that's why we had the sacred fire today. To burn that, to remember those spirits that have not gone home. And hopefully they have gone home. But we don't know. But I know Jesus promised, you know, bring all the children unto me. 
and they will, he will take them home because they were innocent. God loves all the children. He loves all people, but it's up to us to accept that. And sometimes people don't want to accept that. And it's really sad for when I see that. It's like when people are like, oh, I don't believe in God. Or I don't believe in the church. And I said, that's okay. And I said, you know what? You don't need to go to church to believe in God. But as long as you believe, that's what matters. That's what Creator wants you to do. He wants you to know Him. And you need to get to know him. And that's what I've learned through so many different churches I've been involved with or gone to. But I've always gone back to my roots. And even now, even more, when I've learned more about my indigenous spirituality, it's brought me so close to God. I can feel him all the time. And it just makes me so happy. Even when I'm going through trials and tribulations, he's there with us. He's there. Sometimes you don't realize it. And for a long time, I used to think that. When I found my birth family, I remember, you know, that was a tragedy in my life. It was the worst thing in my life that I ever went through. I was part of the 60 scoop. I was adopted as a baby into the Claussen family. But I'm so happy that they took me and chose me because I look at those children in residential schools. They didn't make it. And I know if I was sent there, I wouldn't be here. And I could have been one of those. But I was lucky. I, I was lucky I was sick the first four months of my life. I was in the hospital and then went into foster care. But I remember my mom and dad told me, well, we wanted a little girl and you were available, so we took you on a trial basis. And I was like, trial? What? And he was like, well, but we kept you. And I'm like, well, obviously, right? But growing up, I had a good life. I had a privileged life. You know, I had everything I wanted, needed. I had a warm bed to sleep in. I had food to eat. I had a shelter. I went to the best schools. I had an education. I had three brothers that loved me as their own sister. They didn't say, oh, well, she's, you know, she's not really my sister. She was adopted. But they never, they ever said that. You're like, no, that's my sister. We know half the time people didn't believe me because my brother's so pale white and then, and then we're together. He's like, they're like, you guys are related? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I always joke, he was adopted. <laughs> and they're like, and he looks at me like, who was not? And I'm like, I know, I'm just kidding. But I was a lucky one. But I also look at, even though I went through all these bad things and found out these awful things and the tragedies that my birth family went through. God was still in the midst. And sometimes we forget that because our flesh is, can be stronger and uh, we don't want to deal with it. We get so angry with all these blame God. Why did this happen to me? And sometimes it's just things just happen. I think that all the time. Well, why did this happen to me? Why did that happen to me? You know, why was my birth mother so screwed up? You know, why, why did she have me when she was 14 years old? Why was my birth father so mean? Why did he abuse her so badly? I used to hate him for that. And the, and the anger and the... And, that he did to my birth mother because she was so, so broken. But as I got older, I look back now. Because God was always in the midst. 
You know, he gave me a family. He gave me a dad that loves me unconditionally to replace the abusive one. He gave a, mom, a mother who loves me no matter what I screwed up on. He gave me three brothers who are love me to death and are protective of me. Because God doesn't make mistakes. When bad things happen, God will try to make it better out of that situation. And that's where our spirit needs to be willing to accept that. Sometimes it's hard. And that's so hard sometimes for my indigenous people because they're broken. But then they have, they know creator, they love creator. And they go on. As we all say, we're still here. We're not going anywhere. He tried to kill us the first time. It's not going to happen, though. And with all these things that have happened, their sins have been revealed. Creator is bringing that out. All the churches, all of Canada, whether you took part in it, or you didn't, if you don't help the problem, you're part of the problem. And we don't change our ways. But there's no change. But if there's a glimpse, and that's what I'm trying to do, just give the glimpse of what it's like to be in a, my moccasins. And remember that. You know, our spirits are so willing and you give us that inch and you say, yes, you can do anything. You can move mountains. And that's what Creator has done for me. I'm moving mountains. I never thought I'd be able to do things like this in the church in a million years. Never. Not only me going to seminary, like, what? <laughs> I know if I went to my high school reunion now, they'd all think, you were what? <laughs> You're going to seminary? It was the first time I went to my f high school reunion. I had brought my friend who was like 10 feet tall and he kept going around telling everybody that I was his, he was my parole officer and that I'd just gotten out of prison. And it freaked everyone out because they didn't really know me. <laughs> But, and then the girls were all acting bizarre, and I'm just like, what is wrong with these people? And because I had said, no, I've been working in nursing for the past 10 years. But he's going around telling everybody, no, she was in prison. I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm outside, and then they're like, oh, so how has your 10 years been? I'm like, good. And he said, oh, okay. What have you been doing? And I'm like, oh, you know, looking after old people, and you know. And he's like, oh, okay. And I was just like, what is wrong with these people? And then so one of the girls asked me, I'm like, so what's prison like? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and, then he, and then my friend told me, oh yeah, I've been telling you I'm your, I'm your parole officer. And I'm like, why the heck would you do that? What is wrong with you? I was so embarrassed. I was just like, you know, cause these, I didn't, cause I moved here the last year of my high school, my high, of high school. So I didn't really know these people. So I was just like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But besides that, we live in a great world. And we come together, we can do change. But if we don't, and we don't have change, then we see this sin come out. And I remember one of the one of the Archbishop um, Mark McDonald said to us at Sacred Circle. He said he wished people would just come together. And he's like, all the churches would come together, but we're not. 
we're all in different. So that's where, you know, the spirit is willing. But they're like, oh, well, we don't want to do that. That's different or that's different or, you know. And I'm like, oh, God is God. Creator is creator. All the same. Thank you for listening.
all my relations. For an everlasting sign that thou shalt be 
being cut off. Go in peace and spread the love and good news. <laughs>